everybody. My name is Carly Mercer. I'm the director of garden programming at Love and Carrots. We're a home organic vegetable gardening company uh, based in DC, and the majority of our clients are residents, uh, homeowners, but we also do gardens for apartment complexes, community gardens, and schools. And I talked to you a little bit today about the lessons we've learned on our way to making a buck in urban ag. So it's mostly going to be about mistakes we've made, but <laughs> hopefully they will be inspiring. <coughs> so at Love and Carrots, we do everything from design to installation to maintenance and coaching for our clients. As of today, we've installed almost 500 gardens in the D.C. area since 2011. We currently maintain this season over 142 gardens in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. We have 12 full-time employees. We own our base of operations. We've got a big old greenhouse, and we have a lot of cars. Very impressive. Um, but it wasn't always that way. In 2011, we started with just a founder and an idea. We had a pull tab flyer that we put up in a couple of local businesses and blasted an announcement to local listservs and blogs and bought some shovels. And by we, I mean one person. And this is our humble basement greenhouse and our first garden that we installed. At the end of 2011, we'd installed 17 gardens and were maintaining four. And by the end of 2012, we'd installed 35 gardens and were maintaining 25. So that big leap, big leap can be attributable to some good media that we got um, and allowed us to grow. But there were also a lot of lessons we learned that year. First one, start keeping records from day one. That allows you to figure out what you did and plan for the future and also figure out where your real costs and time is going. Um, good thing to do is get feedback and ideas from your clients. They're going to tell you what they're willing to pay for and what they want you to do. Some of our, um, our garden maintenance uh, service and also our landscaping side of our business came from suggestions from clients. You don't have to listen to all their ideas. Um, people have weird ideas, like using <laughs> giant mirrors to direct sunlight into a shady garden. Not really a great idea for us to follow. <laughs> um, and we also did a lot of bartering with restaurants to get our name in front of the right people. And uh, one of the things we learned also is that free work at first is okay to get in front of influential people or get your name out there, but no one to value your expertise. And also take advantage of free things like zip card trucks. Uh, 2013 and 2014 were real growth years for us. You can see quality gardens is improving. By the end of 2014, we'd installed 87 gardens, and just in that year alone, and we're maintaining 75. That um, was attributable to our hiring. We hired a bunch more people, and we hired five really crucial um, people in 2014. And the lesson we learned there was it's important to hire for personality over credentials. You can train someone to do anything, but you can't install them in passion for the work or the job that they're doing. And that's really what's going to keep people around in sustainable lag, because as we mentioned, it's not always a money maker. We have a lot of cars, none of them are fancy yet. Um, <laughs> and then this is also the year we started trying to do a better job of tracking. We moved into using QuickBooks, um, accountants, a lot more Excel sheets. <laughs> Still not doing a great job on tracking, but getting there. Um, and then also we learned that you can contract out for specific expertise, so we were able to get a lot of larger, bigger, better jobs by um, contracting out for landscape designers on those specific projects, but we didn't need to pay an expensive landscape designer to be on staff all the time. And getting those bigger jobs led to better jobs as well. Still working with a lot of local businesses, we love good barter. We have bar tabs all around town. Very exciting. Um, 2015 to present were our real growth years. Um, in, you can see the gardens are getting fancier and higher up off the ground. By the end of 2016, we'd installed almost 300 gardens in those last three years, and we're maintaining up to 150 uh, per season. The lessons that allowed us to really uh, capitalize on that growth were those people that we hired in 2014, all of them stayed. And so we were able to train people, keeping that knowledge within the company was invaluable. Never underestimate the amount of time and money it costs to train new people. Um, so those capable management teams were able to oversee the different aspects of our business. So someone was overseeing our garden maintenance. Um, someone, me. <laughs> someone was overseeing our build crew. Um, and someone was using computers in the office, which was something we hadn't had the luxury of doing up until 2015. Um, and so that allowed us to do a lot more quality control. We were able to do better gardens, um, nicer gardens, fancier gardens. Things were just a higher quality product we were offering to people, and that uh, enabled us to charge what we were actually worth. Um, 
as Justin said, you know, it's, it's that temptation to really um, make yourself available to the most people, but what we really realize is like, this is a luxury product, and um, we can use that luxury product to underwrite some uh, more of the social justice projects that we want to undertake, but we're not going to be afraid to charge what we're worth. Um, and those higher um, costs for our product allowed us to keep better people on staff, pay our employees more, and get um, bigger and better equipment like uh, tillers or um, edgers that allowed us to take on bigger and better jobs. We also started using client relationship management software, which was a learning experience. Uh, it's expensive, so make sure you're using the right one that works for you. We used a few that really didn't, and don't be afraid to cut ties and figure out what's going to uh, be the most useful for a bunch of grubby farmers out in the field. iPads are a real technological development. Uh, allow us to really dial in the tracking. We have farmers in every garden taking pictures of the garden when they're in there and tracking all the time they're spending and all the materials they're putting in so we actually know how much things cost, which was revolutionary. Um, and then it, it allowed us to build our reputation. So we were able to get better connections, bigger jobs, and better applicants. So just to sum up all the things I just told you that you probably remember because this is a very short presentation. Uh, you want to do solid record keeping from day one. We only just recently, this season, started charging for drive time, which is crazy. We were spending up to two hours driving to and from gardens uh, for installations that we were just eating the cost of that. So tracking really helps you identify the true cost of your work. Um, don't be afraid to start out with a team of expert advisors and pay for someone good. We went on the cheap with accountants for a number of our beginning years, and we learned that is like a very expensive mistake to make, and we made it. Twice. <laughs> so definitely worth it to pay for someone good up front. Um, cost of training new people is real. Keep the good ones and reward loyalty, but also don't be afraid um, if someone, you know, despite their skills, if someone is a problem on your workforce, um, it's better to get rid of them and start over than let a issue fester. Fester, it's a gross word. Um, and don't be afraid to contract out to get bigger jobs and build your reputation know your value. Um, it's good to do things for a discounted rate or for free when it's for the right people, getting yourself in front of the right businesses or um, growing strategically, but you only say no to jobs once you've established yourself. Um, we definitely learned that stone masonry is not where we should be going, <laughs> and gardens are our forte. Um, so thank you for having me. It's been great, and if you have any questions, feel free to find me afterwards.